power is everywhere. It runs our homes, charges our phones, fuels our cities. We depend on it for everything, yet most of us never stop to think about where it actually comes from. And when we do, the answers can be uncomfortable. Coal, oil, gas, polluting the air and heating the planet. Solar and wind, clean, yes, but unpredictable. And then there's nuclear. Nuclear energy was supposed to be the miracle. Endless clean power with almost no emissions. But instead of becoming our future, it became a fear. A word that brings images of disasters, evacuations, radioactive clouds, and decades of cleanup. It's a technology stuck in a shadow, promising everything, delivering far less, and terrifying millions in the process. So we argue. Politicians stall. Countries hesitate. People protest. But while the rest of the world waits and worries, China quietly builds. In a part of China you've probably never heard of, a brand new kind of nuclear reactor has quietly come online. No announcement, no big media coverage, no controversy, just a soft hum as it began sending electricity into the grid. This is not science fiction. It's not a prototype or a test facility. This is real power, real homes, real people using it. The reactor is something different. It's part of a new wave of nuclear energy that's smaller, safer, faster to build, and designed from the ground up to avoid the mistakes of the past. These are called Small Modular Reactors, or SMRs, and they're not just a new kind of machine, they're a new idea. For most of history, nuclear power meant massive facilities, giant cooling towers, construction that took 10 years or more, budgets that exploded into the billions, and exclusion zones in case something went terribly wrong. That model is breaking down. SMRs don't work like that. They're built in factories, shipped in parts, and assembled on site. Construction can take just two to three years instead of ten. And if more power is needed, you don't build a second plant, you just add another module. Like Lego blocks. These reactors are designed to scale. One unit can power a small town, several can anchor a city, they offer flexibility that old nuclear could never match. And the best part? They're built with safety in mind from the start. Most SMRs don't rely on pumps or humans to cool down in emergencies. They use passive systems, natural convection, gravity, and heat transfer to shut themselves down safely. That means if something goes wrong, the system doesn't melt down, it just cools off, automatically. Even more impressive? SMRs produce almost no emissions. Over their full life cycle, they produce as little carbon as wind power. In fact, in some cases, less than solar. No smoke, no pollution, just clean, steady energy. And this isn't just a dream, it's already happening. In China's Shandong province, a revolutionary type of nuclear reactor is already up and running. It's called the HTRPM, which stands for High Temperature Gas-Cooled Pebble Bed Modular Reactor. The name is technical, but the idea is simple. Instead of long metal fuel rods, this reactor uses small graphite balls, pebbles, each filled with uranium particles, thousands of them, constantly circulating in the core. And instead of water, the coolant is helium, a noble gas. It doesn't become radioactive, it doesn't boil, it doesn't corrode pipes or pressure vessels. This design dramatically reduces the chances of any catastrophic failure. And if the flow of coolant stops, the reactor naturally cools down, without any power, without any pumps, and without human intervention. It simply settles into a safe state. This is the first reactor of its kind in the world to deliver power to the grid. It entered commercial operation in 2023, quietly, successfully, safely. No one paid much attention, but they should have. Because what China has quietly proven is something dozens of companies and research labs around the world are still trying to do. And there's more. On Hainan Island, Another SMR called Linglong-1 is nearing completion, but this one is even more important internationally. Why? 
because Linglong One is the first SMR in the world to receive full safety approval from the International Atomic Energy Agency. That makes it export ready. Not just a domestic project, but a product China can sell to the world. Linglong One is based on traditional pressurized water reactor technology, well understood and widely accepted. But it's much smaller just 125 megawatts, about a tenth the size of a typical reactor. That makes it perfect for places that don't need or can't handle a giant nuclear plant, a remote industrial zone, a large village, a small city. It can also be used for more than just electricity. Linglong One can desalinate seawater, heat buildings, or act as backup for unstable grids. And all of it? Built in a factory delivered sealed, installed quickly. That's the future. But on the other side of the ocean, in the United States, things aren't going so smoothly. America has the talent, the ideas, the designs. Dozens of SMR startups are trying to build the next big thing. But very few have made it beyond vapor. New Scale, once America's SMR frontrunner, got the first ever US design certification, but rising costs and lack of investor confidence have led to canceled projects and mounting doubts. Another company, X Energy, backed by Amazon, is working on a helium-cooled design. It's promising, but also stuck. The challenge isn't engineering. It's money, regulation, and public trust. In China, the government takes the risk. In the U.S., developers rely on venture capital, federal grants, and hesitant utility companies. And even if they get the technology right, there's still red tape. Environmental reviews, community resistance, grid compatibility studies. The delays stack up. America isn't falling behind in knowledge. It's falling behind in execution. And while engineers perfect designs, time is slipping away. Meanwhile, China is already exporting reactors. But the race isn't just between governments. There's another force driving this quietly, the tech industry. Because in a world of AI, cloud computing, and 24-7 services, data centers are becoming energy monsters, and they're growing fast. By 2030, data centers may use more than 5% of global electricity. That's more than many countries, and tech companies know they can't rely on unstable grids or fluctuating renewables, so they're turning to nuclear. Google, Microsoft, Amazon, all quietly investing in SMR technology, not for publicity, but for survival. These companies don't care about politics. They care about uptime, stability, control. Microsoft already hired a director of nuclear energy. Amazon is backing X Energy. Google is exploring reactor-backed energy projects. Because for these companies, SMRs are not about saving the world, they're about keeping it online. And that's not the only pressure point. Uranium, the fuel that powers nearly all reactors, is becoming more important than ever. Demand is rising and the supply chain is under strain. Uranium must be mined, enriched, and shaped into fuel pellets. And each one of those pellets holds the energy equivalent of a ton of coal. Companies like Uranium Royalty Corp. don't mine directly. They fund the miners and collect royalties just like in oil and gas. New mining methods like in-situ recovery are cleaner and more efficient, reducing the environmental footprint. But as SMRs grow, securing a reliable uranium supply will become a national priority, just like oil once was. And then there's the one issue nuclear energy can't ignore. Waste. Yes, nuclear waste lasts for thousands of years. That's the reality. Some new reactor designs promise to reduce waste, others claim to reuse it. But early research from Stanford shows that some SMRs may actually create more waste by volume, even if it's less radioactive. That doesn't make the technology bad, but it means we need to be honest. We bury carbon in the sky. Nuclear waste stays in the ground. If we can manage it safely, openly, the nuclear becomes an even stronger tool. But pretending the waste problem doesn't exist would only repeat the mistakes of the past. In the end, no single solution will power our future. 
There won't be one big breakthrough, one perfect technology, one hero that saves the world. Instead, it'll be a patchwork. A hundred smart ideas, a thousand good decisions, one small reactor at a time. SMRs aren't perfect. They aren't simple. But they are real. And right now, they're being built. Not debated, not proposed, built. While others talk, China is installing reactors. While others wait, tech companies are moving. And by the time we realize what changed the world, the lights will already be on, the wires already buried, the future already humming quietly beneath our feet.